Okay, everybody, I'm so excited today because I am joined by Sean Astin and Christopher Polaha, who star in The Shift, which comes out now in theaters. How are you guys doing today? Hey, brother. Good. We're, how, we're well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so pumped to talk to you guys. Uh, my first question here is for Sean. Sean, a lot of comments on the trailer. People are really excited to see you doing more action and sci-fi. So at this point in your career, is there any genre that you will not do or just not open to at all? <laughs> other than porn. Yeah. <laughs> other than porn. No, I mean, I, you know, I, who, go where the go where the work is, you know? I, I don't know. There's nothing, um, you know, vampire thriller? Sure. Sure. Why not? Uh, no, I, I like I like doing all. You know what? I I really prefer at the moment, at this moment in my life, comedic stuff because life is hard, and you know you go and do movies like this, and and they're hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you had it was hard. It was hard you. work. It was hard yeah, it was work. Heavy every you day. know, and I'm just like yeah. I think maybe something that's a little bit a little bit easier. And then the way it's always gone in my career is just when you, you've enjoyed that a little bit, then you're like, I need something really, you know, something to really I dig into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. How about a Hallmark movie? Would you Done. ever do, would you ever do a Hallmark movie? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. I got I got, I got, really? I got, I got some for you, man. I just got a job, you guys. I got, I got <laughs> some for <awesome, laughs> man. Cool. I love that. And I love you're open to all this life, stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, <laughs> Christopher, I absolutely love the narration you do in this film as Kevin. When you were narrating, were you actually seeing the footage of the movie in front of you? And you have any tips for just doing that narration? You know what's funny? That's a great question and such a such a like smart question, bro. Because not, I don't oh, think a lot you. of people would pick up on that stuff. Normally, the way that things work is that you would have the luxury of sitting in a nice big room, cans on the ears, watching it, and sort of allowing it to. We didn't have the time because this movie was filmed January, February, March, and to hit that December one release date, they were jamming out this, and it was a fascinating process. There was a, there used to be almost a, a two hour and 20 minute version of the film. Um, they went through a lot of different editing processes. And so once that picture was locked, they threw the narration in after the fact, and they said, hey, you know what, to tie the story together, we're gonna add this element. So I went in and I just, I just read stuff. And I, and I was listening to myself. Of course, I knew what scenes they were going to go in. So like I knew when Kevin was praying, like what that was. I knew the whole beginning. I knew the end. Um, Brock Heasley, uh, you know, he's a very particular, uh, precise storyteller. He knows what he wants. And again, he would ask me to say something and I'd be like, yeah, but I think I'm going to say it this way. He'd be like, yeah, I know, but can you say it? Like, I need you to say it the way that it's written. And can you say it? Can you emphasize that thing? And um, there is a bit of just being flexible and saying, you know what, I'm going to do it that way. I'll give you that one. Can you give me this one? Um, the only thing I was really particular on was instead of saying Molly in the beginning of the narration, I said, find my way home. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a good call because mm. then there's the call back at the end. Yeah. What? Well, I'm just talking about the end of the movie. Don't talk about <laughs> the Go see the movie Don't in theaters. It. It, no, but it's it, funny with actors sometimes is you, you want to do something over and over again. And I guess when you're when you're sending in like an audition tape, it's the most where you are in charge of looking at yourself because you're deciding what to send in or not. And you're like, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. And at a certain point, like what may seem complete, you know, take one and take 30. They seem so different to you to a person who walks up. It's like, bro, you're in it. Mm, you right. can't. Right. not do it right if you just say it it's just who you it. are you're just, living in this yeah. character for these months of doing it, however long you did yeah. the, the show and it's like you, you know can you just record this at lunch real quick for yeah. us and you're and like yeah and, but yeah dude uh, do you, did you ever work with a guy named jerry levine no director used to be an actor a long time ago teen wolf jerry levine anyway right. i was working on a tv show with him called life unexpected years ago i played this character Baze, and he gave me this blessing he spoke life into my life in a way that no other director has where he was like brother you can't make a mistake. He's like, you are Bayes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, anything you do is Bayes. And to that point, mm -hmm. once you're in it, once it's your role, you get to have that life of being like, and it really is like, yeah, let's just do this thing. We're going to do our thing. That's so funny we because th this movie is a see it in the theater movie. You know, it's a it's a it's a movie that has the size of the, of the canvas, the, the the framing of the shots is is sort of old school scope. And uh, and yet you hear these intimate words that he's saying, and so you're just doing it like, 
you're doing it on a day, but the audience is experiencing yeah. it like it's going into their the like the whole spirit. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's that all point, great stuff. It is something yeah. that you should see in the theater. If you, if, you know, let people know to go out on December first, especially if you like these kind of movies. If you want to see more of them, you got to vote with your dollar, and the box office has to be representative of that. But it's uh, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's it's a sci-fi. Is it weird romance. that it's a Christmas movie? Yeah, it's a Christmas <laughs> movie. No, it is. It I mean, is. it's like it's it's at the beginning of Christmas, especially if you see it at the beginning of Christmas, yeah. because it's so heavy. But it's all about like the choices you make that lead to who you are and his family is what he wants. And he's yeah. fighting the whole movie to try and get to his family. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's about bringing your family together. And yeah. So it's like planes, trains, and automobiles <laughs> meets, meets Goonies. Goonies meets Goonies. Yeah. yeah Cause it's another yeah. world. It's a, it's a fantasy yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're and... In it. <laughs> I'm in it, right. right. That's in that's, that way. That's, it's it, exactly it, like in goodness. that way. Speaking of fantasy worlds, <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I had to ask you, have you built this Lego Lord of the Rings set, the Rivendell one? Or do you plan on doing it in your lifetime if you haven't? I have spent months working on the Legoland Rivendell set. Do you believe me? Oh. Uh, I oh, sort I of believe you. Know, I, I can't spend 10 seconds on Legos. First of all, it hurts your fingers when you snap them together. If I was going to do Lego, it'd be the Death Star. Oh, oh yeah, hell yeah. Star. Yeah. That would be Is great. He's be also a, a dad to daughters. So yeah. well, did Legos play a big part in their life? Sure. They did not did my they? youngest one loved like Love Legos. Yeah, okay. like trucks and stuff. Yeah. Da okay. Three daughters. Yeah. Love it. That's great. Um All things that you would normally consider boy things, Boy toys. Yeah. yeah. Micah, my middle guy was a huge Lego guy, but yeah. Christopher, I had a question for you too. You're being an author yourself, do you find anything in scripts now that you value more or appreciate more when you're reading ahead? You know, um, the thing about being an actor when you're young is you think it's all about you. You're like, what does my character say? I mean, I know actors that wouldn't read the script. They would just go from page to like see where they are in the, in the script and be like, I'm in it enough, sure, or whatever. <laughs> what I've learned by being an author and writing books now is that the story is the thing and that actors are there to serve a specific part of the story. So what is your part in that story? And it's made me a really generous, uh, I hope this isn't an arrogant thing to say, but a generous actor because now it's not about me. It's about the story. That was my experience of you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, <laughs> <I'll take that. laughs> it's amazing. Um, I think that being... You were so interested. You were so, you were like, I think that's what you were doing is good for your character. Yeah. Because all these different people come into your orbit and you were just like, whoa, like what's this new thing? Well, dude, in? it's true. The shift is like a book because you would come in for a week. Mm -hmm. So Sean Astin had a whole week and his, his he changed the literally the temperature of the film. And mm. then Elizabeth Tabish would come and she would change the tone mm. and temperature God, of the film. Could. Paris uh, Paris Patel would come in and he changed John Billingsley. Like, dude, you guys know him. Star Trek is love, love the guy. He he comes in and it was his week to just kind of, and so like reading a book, it was chapter by chapter, and all of a sudden Kevin's journey, almost like the Iliad or the Odyssey, like you get to see these different places as he finds his way back home. Yeah. And also, by the way, just for your for your for your for your viewers, it's the Book of Job set in the multiverse, and so there's sure. this really cool faith element about who you want to be in relationship with. Um, yeah. You know, is it the God? Is it God or the devil? Because you got to choose one. I like, too, that you mentioned it's like a book because the feeling of the narration to me felt like that, too, which really just brought me into it. And, Sean, my last question before I go, um, your character of Gabriel, he's always eating a sandwich in this film. Do you get any say into what type of sandwich you're eating on set here? Do you get a pick? Uh, they they had very good options for me. In fact, sometimes they'll come and ask, and I'm like, I don't know, just something, you know, like French bread. Oh, no, okay, uh, whole wheat. No, I loved, I loved the idea because we were filming in this warehouse thing or this mill, and it was a mill that had a lot of kind of tragic history and also inspirational history to it. And we looked around, and all the uh, the background performers were there with the different, you know, a, a little fire thing over here. People were crashing rocks over there, and something about eating kind of like tied it all together somehow because it made it real and natural and normal and not just um a kind of plate that you're mm. looking against so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes sense yeah it's the power of the sandwich and eating yeah i love it you know you nobody else seems to have access to much food 
right. to me, it was a little bit of like, wait, was there, is this like, is there a reason that this is happening? That this guy sort of has access to food all the time? Yeah, if you're a smart viewer, it's it, it's literally a, a clue. Yeah, it it's is. It's a clue. Yeah. It, there's there are all these clues, these Easter eggs throughout the shift. If you're a film, if you're a film goer, you, uh, not just because we're in it, you're gonna love this movie. Again, it's huge in scope, so you got to see it in the theater. And there are all these little intricate details that sort of, if you watch it, and again, if you watch it again and again every time becomes clear you're like oh my gosh i didn't see that the first time and then that's why he's eating a sandwich i mean it's really it's that cool <laughs> yeah and everyone check out sean and christopher crush it in the shift it's in theaters now thank you guys so much for joining me and i'll talk to you in the future thank you